This lesson is day two on section 7.3, so we're going to continue to factor today. Our objectives are going to be very similar. We want to factor quadratic trinomials, and we want to factor difference of squares, but we're definitely going to ramp up the difficulty level today, so we're going to see some multivariable stuff today. Um, in question one, this is a total review of stuff that you've seen already. It could be difficult right away for you if you try to find two numbers that multiply to negative 30 or to negative 90 and add it up to 9. Um, you, you know, you, you do more work here than necessary because if you just factor out a GCF, so please make sure you're always looking for a GCF first. If you do that, the problem becomes pretty easy. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add up to 3. So that would factor into x minus, I'm sorry, x plus 5 and x minus 2. Okay, now number two can be really confusing for some students um, because they see the two variables here, the x squared and the y squared, and they're not quite sure what to do. But basically, this is just a trinomial, um, and it's multivariable. Now, if I ignore that y squared term here, I'm left with x squared minus 2x minus 8, and that's really easy to factor. That's just going to turn into x minus 4 and x plus 2. I'm leaving a blank here because in order to get that first term to be x squared y squared, I would have to just multiply x by a y, so then now I have x squared y squared, and if I FOIL this, the rest of this out, I have that negative 4xy, I have a positive 2xy, and a negative 8, which would simplify to that original trinomial above. So in this case, when you see multivariable stuff, don't get confused, it, you, you can even get rid of the, uh, the variable, the other variable, and just try to simplify it for yourself but this would factor into xy minus 4 and xy plus 2. Okay, now in number 3, um, I look and try to take out a GCF, but there isn't one here, um, and I have a lead coefficient that's not 1, which means I have to split the middle term in order to factor this. So I'm going to look for two numbers that will multiply to 4 times 9, which is 36, but will also add up to that middle term, negative 12. So those two numbers would be negative 6 and negative 6, so then I split that term into negative 6x and negative 6x. So I keep the 4x squared the same, bring down the negative 6x and the negative 6x, and bring down the 9. And then I group the first two terms together, and I take out a GCF, so that GCF would be 2x here. I'm left with 2x then minus 3. Then I look at the GCF of the next two terms, that GCF would be a negative 3, so I'm left with 2x minus 3. So I can check my work to make sure I'm doing it correctly, because I see the same um, thing in the parentheses, so I know I'm doing it right. So I bring that down once. 2x minus 3, and then I group the other remaining terms together because I'm basically factoring out what they have in common. I'm taking out the 2x minus 3, which would leave me with 2x minus 3. So this is an example of a perfect square, because this is just 2x minus 3 squared. So this trinomial here is the result of 2x minus 3 squared. Okay, now in problem four, we see another multivariable question. Um, it's not going to factor exactly like the last one did, because this one's a little bit more complex. Now, if I, again, ignore the y term, so I'd suggest just to look at it first with um, just one of the variables. Make sure that's a 1, because this is 1y squared. So if we ignore the y squared, I still have a 1 there. Well, this is now a problem very similar to number three, where we can't take out a GCF, and we have a lead coefficient that's not 1. So we're going to have to split the middle term in order to factor this. Now, the same thing applies when you factor anything, even if it's multivariable. You're still looking for something that will multiply to the uh, coefficients of the first and the last term. So I need something that multiplies to 8, but adds up to 6. That would be 4 and 2. So I'm going to split the middle term here, and then I'm going to add back the, uh, the y term. So that I end up with 8x squared plus 4xy plus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, so again, I'm just splitting the middle term, same thing that I normally would do, I'd multiply 8 times 1, and then use the 6 here to find my, t my numbers. Now, I just factor by grouping again, so I take the first two terms and I take out the GCF. The GCF here would be a 4 and an x, so I'm left with 2x plus y here. Now, in the next two terms, if I take out a GCF, the GCF here is just a y, that's the only thing they have really in common, is a positive y. I'd be left with, in the first term, 2x and then 1y here in the second term. So because I see the same thing in parentheses, I know I'm doing something right, so I can continue here. I'm left with 2x plus y. Factoring that out from here leaves me with 4x and y. So that leaves me with the second binomial, 4x plus y. So again, even though they look kind of tough to factor, they're not too bad as long as you uh, go back to the same rules that you would apply. 
in factoring any regular trinomial with just one variable. All right, now the next part of our lesson is going to focus on factoring a difference of squares. So um, this is just going to, again, increase in difficulty here, but it still follows the same general rule that when you have um, two conjugate binomials, that would foil into uh, the difference of two squares. Okay, So here in example 5, I see that both of these are perfect squares, and I also see a difference, which means that this would factor into 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. As simple as that. Now problem 6 is really similar. I still see two perfect squares and a difference. But when I factor this, so that would factor into x squared plus y squared and x squared minus y squared, I can't just stop here because I see that one of the factors, x squared minus y squared, can actually continue to be factored. So if I were to factor this completely, I now have x squared plus y squared times x plus y times another x minus y because this is, again, a difference of squares that needs to be factored as well. So this would actually be my final answer here for problem 6. All right, now number seven is on here just because we so sometimes see students who want to over-factor things. For example, in, in this x squared plus 64, they'll see that and they'll automatically use our difference of squares pattern here. But this is not a difference, right? This is a sum. This is a sum of squares. There is no um, way to factor a sum of squares unless you're using imaginary numbers. So we um, actually call that prime. Okay, so when something is not factorable, we say that it's prime. So this is actually not what that would factor into. Remember, this would only give you x squared minus 64. Um, some people think, well, what about x plus 8 and x plus 8? Well, with x plus 8 and x plus 8, you end up with a middle term of 16x, which is clearly not you know, your original problem. So this is not factorable. We call that prime. OK, now number 8, uh, the best way to do this problem is to first take out a GCF. You must always take out a GCF here. So if I take out the GCF, that GCF would be 3x cubed, okay? because both of these terms have at least a 3 and an x cubed in them. Now in the first uh, term, I'd be left with x to the 12th, and in the second term, I'd be left with negative 16y to the 8th. Now if I look at the terms here on the inside, these are both perfect squares. If I were to square x to the 6th, I'd end up with x to the 12th, and if I were to square 4y to the 4th, I end up with 16y to the 8th. So this factors, so this is a difference of squares, okay? And um, I'm just going to factor that a little bit more then, so I keep that 3x cubed out in front. Then I have that as x to the 6th plus 4y to the 4th, and x to the 6th minus 4y to the 4th. Now, I also recognize this term here as another difference of squares. So I have to keep going even further. So my final answer here should be 3x cubed times x to the 6th plus 4y to the 4th times x to the 3rd plus 2y squared times x to the 3rd minus 2y squared. That final factor here is not a difference of squares uh, because this is not a perfect square here. So, and neither actually is this term here because of the 2. So this would be my final answer then for factoring my beginning expression. Okay, now in number nine, um, we're just getting a little bit more advanced here with our difference of squares. Remember, a difference of squares is just a first term squared minus a second term squared. Um, in this case, it, it's just a monomial. Well, here we have just a little bit more complex of a first term. It's just a binomial. So here, uh, this is your general a term. Okay, so we have x minus five basically is my a term, and my b term would be a six. So this would factor into x minus five the quantity plus 6, and x minus 5, that quantity, minus 6. Now, of course, I can continue to uh, simplify this because I can combine like terms here if I get rid of that parentheses. I'm left with x plus 1 for the first term. And in the second term, negative 5 and negative 6 turns into x minus 11. So again, it's just following the pattern a plus b and a minus b. We're just making the substitution that our a value is x minus 5. So we're plugging in the whole thing, x minus 5 here for that a. Then our b term here is just a 6, so it becomes plus 6, and x must minus 5 minus 6. So here, after simplifying, is what I'm left with to factor that first expression. Okay, now next up in number 10 here, it looks like this might be a multivariable question where you need to factor similarly to what we did in the first page. But here, the main difference is that there are actually four terms. 
Okay, on the front side of the, the note sheet here, we were working on three terms, and that ended up being just a normal trinomial that we had to factor. In this case, it doesn't follow that pattern. What I do notice, though, is that I have the terms x squared plus 4x and 4. Now that I can factor real easily into x plus 2 squared. Right, x squared plus 4x plus 4 just factors into x plus 2 squared. Then I have this minus y squared term. Well, that's very similar to what we just worked on over here. Right, um, we have a difference of squares now. Okay, so these four terms here factor into another difference of squares. So the first term here is my, think of this as a squared minus b squared, right? The a is just a little bit more complex, but it should factor into x plus 2 plus y and the quantity x plus 2 minus y. Now I don't need the parentheses here, so that's why in the first term I dropped them, but we end up with x plus 2 plus y and x plus 2 minus y. There's no simplifying here since I don't have any like terms, and that would be my final answer for factoring number 10. Okay, now number 11 is similar to the last two questions, pretty similar um, just from the start to number 9, except for here the uh, order is a little bit different. Um, make sure that when you factor this you don't flip-flop the, the order of this because I have a squared minus b squared. Now my b term is just more complicated. My a term should be 7, so this turns into 7 plus y minus 3 times 7 minus y minus 3. So again, the order is important. Make sure you don't put the 7 after the y minus 3 term. Now I'm going to simplify this because here I can combine like terms. So if I take the 7 and subtract 3, I end up with 4. So this is 4 plus y. And over here, 7, um, I want to distribute that negative, so that becomes 7 minus y plus 3, actually. So I'm going to simplify that and make that 10 minus y. So this factors, my original expression here, factors into 4 plus y times 10 minus y. All right, now for our last question, number 12 looks a lot like number 10. Uh, we see four terms, so it's not a multivariable question that, that factors like a, a normal trinomial, like our front side problems. Um, in this case, I notice that I have this y squared plus 16y minus 64, which I can factor, but it doesn't factor into something nicely unless I take out a negative term from each one of those terms. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus the quantity y squared minus 16y plus 64. So in other words, I'm just taking out a negative, factoring out that negative from each of those terms, which gives me a negative 16y and a positive 64. Now because I did that, I can factor here and call that y minus 8 squared. So I turn that into a perfect square now. So the first term I'm just going to drop down, that's x squared, and then I have that minus sign, and then of course this factors into y minus 8 squared. Now this problem looks almost identical to the last few questions that we've been working on, where again this is your a term, so x is your a term, and your b term is just y minus 8. So it's just a little bit more complicated, but we factor it the same way. We change that into x plus the quantity y minus 8 and x minus the quantity y minus 8. Now if some of you guys will have a tendency to drop the parentheses. Please make sure you're keeping those parentheses until you, um, you know, keep it all the way through until you actually simplify the rest of the problem. Because if you don't put your parentheses here, it looks like it's just x minus y minus 8. But because we have the parentheses there, it's actually x minus y plus 8 when I distribute that negative. So in the first term, the parentheses don't really matter, but in the second one, because we're subtracting, it definitely does matter. Um, and this would actually be my final factor form for my beginning expression here. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, nice job. Make sure that you're comfortable with both the difference of squares here on the back side and the multivariable questions um, on the front side, and you should be good to go tomorrow to get a lot of practice. Nice job. See you tomorrow.